morning, large white farm dogs. You guys sleeping? Look like you're just waking up. Hi. Hi, how's my Toba dog? How's my Abby dog? All right, let's go get yours going. Come on. You know, we had like two or three days of really cold temperatures and then uh, suddenly it got warm again. It's probably about 25 degrees right now. It's gonna warm up today. It should almost get to 40. Moldy Wobbles, are you looking at our veggie scraps for the birds? Is that what's going on there? Okay, I have special treats for you guys. Toby, can you sit? Good boy. Abby, you're being a very good girl. In case you guys are wondering, these are like special joint health treats that I like to give the dogs just as a supplement. There you go. I want to keep you guys happy and healthy for a very long time. Hey, Pablo. How's it going? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, Ginny Barn Cat. How are you doing this morning? She's like, Abby, stay back. This water area has gotten so snowy. It's good to see everybody this morning. Where'd Molly go? Oh, she's over by the gate. Yeah, I got all my crew. It's like we're having a team meeting. All right, guys, we got a big day here on the farm. We got a lot to do. I think everybody knows their job and knows their role. We should be able to do it well. Oftentimes, I like to pretend that the guard dogs and the barn cats and I are like a team at work. Collectively, we're the staff. And so we often like to have team meetings. Isn't that right, Ginevra? Come on, Ginny. Hop up on the shoulder, come on. Are you scared of the dogs? Is that what your problem is? You don't like to jump up on me when I have dogs? She's not having it. Oh, you guys are such good pups. But yes, here on our farm, our team is getting ready for kind of the next big season on the farm. You see, farm life is a little bit different depending on the time of year. And I know that probably seems obvious when you compare the winter right now to the summer, but even in the winter, there are subtle shifts. And in particular, as the days are starting to get longer again, that means we're gearing up for hatching season. All right, you guys, you ready to go greet your birds? Let's go. Good morning, birds! How's everybody doing this morning, huh? Dogs always seem to have to mark their territory in here. You know, I actually got my first goose egg just the other day. And so that means that we are officially getting heavy into laying season. As soon as the volume ticks up and I start getting a couple of goose eggs a day, I'll start selling the goose eggs through our website. Oh, looks like this girl's getting ready to set. Maybe she just laid an egg. Oh, looks like somebody just laid an egg. There we go. So yes, egg laying is starting to spike up. Temperatures are getting warmer. Actually, you can see right here. It is 46 degrees inside here and about 32 degrees directly outside of here. So it's, it's actually even warmer than I thought it was. And speaking of warmer, this uh, egg feels nice and toasty too. Ooh. It's freshly laid. Both dogs are like looking at it with anticipation. I'm sorry guys, but that's gonna end up being my breakfast probably. I actually think I know why the dogs are so excited. I have this collection of chicken scraps and I took a little bit of our leftovers from supper last night and I snuck it in here as a surprise for the dogs. Good oh boy, enjoy. Abby, you are being such a good girl right now. You are being so well behaved. That deserves a good reward. Good job. Good job both of you. It makes me immensely happy to make those dogs happy. And here, chickens, you can have some too. I think the chicken treats actually smell like the meat, and so that's why the dogs are very curious about them. But they'll get bored pretty quick. Release the Kraken! I really do feel like this was the winter that killed Release the Kraken. Like maybe they're a little bit curious to come outside, but even still, not really. Judy Barncat, what are you doing in here, huh? Yeah, the only one who wants to go outside is our buddy Toby Dog. He actually likes coming out here and checking on things and peeing on fence posts. They didn't even eat all their feed yesterday, huh? Now, because the birds are starting to get to this place where they're laying more and more, one of the things I need to do is set up nests, particularly for my geese. Now, in years past, I would typically just like make like little stalls for them, but I got an idea and I wanna try to do a little something different for my goose nest this year. My hope is that it creates more nests for more geese, as well as it's a little bit easier for me to manage and collect from. So that's our project for this morning. You guys mind passing Ducks. Now I'm still gonna use pallets as the main ingredient for my goose nest this year. But what I want to do is actually like make a stall in the center. You know, right about here is the warmest point inside the hoop coop, and I want to keep the eggs as warm as possible. My thinking there is that it will improve the viability of my egg. So that's what I'm going to do. Maestro, cue the build sequence. Ugh. <sighs> 
man. While I am thankful that the camera is okay, unfortunately, the tripod is not. It looks like we're gonna have to add another equipment kill to Abby's scorecard. Abby, I can't believe you did that. Really, girl. Still no egg. A few moments later. And would you look at that? We just got a fresh egg. How about that? Ooh, nice and toasty. Actually, this whole building is nice and toasty. It feels like it's getting warmer and warmer by the minute. All right, Toby, so this is our site. My thinking is I'm gonna use the cinder blocks as like a base and like a stabilizer, and then I'll prop the different pallets up as dividers. I've never seen this done before, but I was just thinking about it yesterday. I think I had an idea. Okay, so that makes one wall. So we now have one, two, three, four, five, six stalls. I'll try to get my hands on another good pallet in the next few days and I'll replace this just so there's one more stall. But essentially the idea is that's six whole nests that I can maintain all at once. In years past I've found that my geese often establish six different nests and so I even have a few less geese this year than I did last winter. So I think this should work well. Of course as I'm watching it right now it seems like the chickens want to take it over. But they'll help me spread out the straw. And so yes, let's observe and see how things go. For those of you guys wondering about the chickens and where do they nest, their nesting space is actually in here. So these are the main nesting boxes that they use this time of year. Still got a couple girls hanging out on the roost in here, as you can see. Actually, just yesterday I came through here and I did slight reconfigurations of this. I cleaned it up a little bit and I put this cover on it and I put a back because what I was finding is sometimes the chickens would like come in here and lay their eggs and they'd go behind the nesting boxes, which was always no fun at all when a month and a half later I find a broken egg and it sunk like hot hot. So that's their primary nesting box. They also have this one here that they don't really use often. There's only one or two birds that seem to use it. And then the ducks, they just tend to lay in chaos. They lay wherever they want. I haven't seen many duck eggs so far this year, but I expect their laying to pop up pretty quickly too. They're usually pretty closely in sync with the geese for when they start laying. And of course, Toby Dog has to mark the territory. You see how polite Abby was right there? It was like she was waiting for traffic to pass before crossing the street. That was really good of you, pup. That was really good. I don't know if you see that one lone goose in the middle, right there. That's Frank. Frank is the goose who thinks she's a duck, just like I have Ron Swanson, who's the duck who thinks she's a goose. Oh no! I realized I left my multi-tool right at the top of the hay bale. Arguably the most important thing I carry these days. I absolutely love seeing these happy, hungry highlands. How's it going, Amanda? Still spooked me? Maybe you can get a little closer. Yeah. Oh, good to see you, Amanda. Hey, Annabelle. You know, Annabelle isn't spooked to me. See, I have found it works so much better that I feed these guys two bales of hay at a time versus say doing it every other day. So pretty much every four days or so, I give these guys two bales of hay. And that seems to be just about the right mix for them. I don't like to keep putting the same bales in the same space because what happens is you end up getting the most manure wherever the bale is. And so for example, one of our last bales was like right here by these tires. We got a whole bunch of manure that'll probably come through with the honey wagon pretty soon and clean up. I also find that by separating the hay bales out, it prevents more herd fighting. You can see sort of all my dominant cows. So you've got Audrey, Ariel, and Anne of Green Gables, plus their calves getting to eat. You've got my two least dominant adult females here with Annabelle and Amanda Hugging Kiss, and they're kind of being left behind. But I wonder if I show particularly Amanda here that there's more hay on the other side, if she gets to go 
get a bite to eat. Come on, girl. No? You don't want to go? You don't want to leave your herd? All right. It's your loss. And sometimes they just don't know any better and like to deprive themselves. Of course, one gal who doesn't want to deprive herself is Molly Murdermans. Hey, Molly. Can't reach you. And I know you're not going to jump on me like Ginny does. She likes to hang out on these things, too. Hello, large white farm dogs. Abby, leave it. Don't eat that. I tossed that over there to throw out. I tossed the hay bale string over the fence earlier just to get it out of the way. And Abby was trying to use it as a chew toy. Come on, guys. Let's go check on our bird. see anybody nesting in here yet. It's still really early and they probably need to get used to it. Seems like the chickens are actually more interested in it than the geese. But I bet you the geese are going to turn on to it pretty soon. So I do know there is one last addition I need to make for these nests to be complete. And so what I just did is dropped a ceramic egg right there. Hopefully that will help indicate to the geese that they need to start laying and start laying right there. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this latest update from the farm. I'll check back in again real soon to give you an update on what's happening with goose mating season as well as egg laying season. But I can definitely say for sure that this will be a very, very busy spring. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon.